Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're having a very pleasant uh, Wednesday. It's uh, it's sunny outside. It's not terrible this morning. Um, so, not for August, at least. Um, so, anyway, uh, I want to share with you a, a thought today. Um, and it's going to be a rather extended reading, so I'll go ahead and apologize now. But, as I have pondered... Um, those in our fellowship who have recently lost loved ones um, or are still dealing with the long-term effects of grief. I'm reminded of an exchange by Thomas Jefferson and um, John Adams. The exchange occurs on news of Abigail Adams John Adams' wife, death in 1818. They were um, three days shy of their 54th wedding anniversary when Abigail Adams died. And Jefferson, who, and they had already, the Adamses had lost an adult child, um, I think about seven years before. So, um, Jefferson had lost um, his wife early, early in their marriage, and then lost a daughter, an adult daughter later on. Um, so, in some ways, what Jefferson and Adams are dealing with is, is similar. So, Jefferson writes to Adams this, and he says, tried myself in the school of affliction by the loss of every form of connection which can rive, rive the human heart, I know well and feel what you have lost, what you have suffered, are suffering, and have yet to endure. The same trials have taught me that for ills so immeasurable, time and silence are the only medicines. I will not, therefore, by useless condolences, open afresh the sluices of your grief, nor, although mingling sincerely my tears with yours, will I say a word more. Where words are vain, but that it is of some comfort to us both that the term is not very distant at which we are both, we are to deposit in the same cerement our sorrows in suffering bodies, and to ascend in essence to an ecstatic meeting with the friends we have loved and lost, and whom we shall still love and never lose again. God bless you and support you under your heavy affliction. First off, wow, don't I wish we wrote like that today. Secondly, Jefferson says, I understand. I've been there. I know what you have gone through, what you're going through, and what you still yet to endure. Now, we know that people's grief is never the same, but Jefferson's saying, I've walked a similar path, essentially. And he says a couple of things. He says, number one, um, you know, I understand that, that time and silence are the best medicines. You know, part of the problem in life, and so he goes on to say, and so I will say no more. Part of the problem in life is that when folks are grieving, we feel it necessary, we feel it incumbent upon us to fill the void, to talk, 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 talk. And to try to some ways to say, you know, well, I got through it. You can do it too and things like that. And in doing that, we don't really understand, I think, grief. And we don't understand that we have to give folks space and time. And so we have that thought from Jefferson. And so we say to ourselves, well, what can we do? Well, Adams responded to Jefferson's letter, and he said this, While you live, I seem to have a bank at Monticello on which I can draw for a letter of friendship and entertainment when I please. Jefferson, uh, Adams says back to Jefferson, You know what? You're the friend I need, and you're always there. And when I need you, I know I can get you. 
Beloved, that's what people need when they're facing grief. They do not need necessarily our um, chattering on. They just simply need to know that we're there for them. It's called the ministry of presence. We simply say, I'm here for you. Whatever you need, just let me know. And we sit with them. And friends know who to call in times like that to walk through it with us. It's just a matter of making ourselves available. Not seeking to fill any void, just saying, I'm here and sit in silence. When I go back to the book of Job and all that Job is going through, I think part of the problem in the book of Job is, is that Job's friends didn't know how to shut their mouths. And it would have been much easier if Job's friends had just kept their mouths shut and just said, hey, buddy, we're here for you. So as we think about how we can help those who are dealing with grief today, just make ourselves present. That's all we need to do is make ourselves present. Until then, we wait. And as we make ourselves present, we realize that we are making ourselves present through grace abounding. May it abound to you, through you, and in you today. I'll see you later on tonight. 6.30 for Facebook prayer meeting. 7 o'clock for Zoom. I'll see you again tomorrow at noon. And until then, take care. God bless. And remember... Grace abounds.